Page Punchers! We have Batman, Lex Luthor, Batman Beyond, Aquaman. That's right, the good folks at McFarland Toys were kind enough to send me out a care package with the latest wave of McFarland Toys Page Puncher action figures. Each one of these guys comes in a resealable package with a comic book packed in. If you want to keep them inside the package for display purpose, you just pop it back in, click the tabs, and voila! Now the fun thing about the fact that each one of these figures comes with a comic is they're different comics, which is fun, and their key issues. So this is a key Flashpoint issue with Emperor Aquaman on there. A key Batman Beyond issue, issue number one of one of the reboots. You got, that's fantastic. I don't think I've actually read this. No, you know what? I definitely have not read this. I will now though. Forever Evil, a New 52 event that was actually really cool. I read the whole thing and this is only a tiny piece of the story, but it's enough to give you a little taste of what was going on at Forever Evil. Spoilers! You had Kryptonite Drug Addict Ultraman along with the rest of the despicable crime syndicate. And of course, the Rebirth Bath... Bathroom. <laughs> Rebirth Batman issue number one. Fantastic. And all of these figures are based out of one of these comics. Well, maybe not Lex. This isn't really what Lex was wearing, but close enough. Let's look at each figure individually, starting with the Batman. Also, if you're wondering why my backdrop looks a bit weird, it's because I found this like odd foam background and I thought it might be kind of neat. I thought it might deflect some of the light, but well, this is hideous. You'll never see this again. Anywho, this little Batman looks really great for something that is so tiny. Like, here's a fuse from my house. And the actual seven inch scale McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Rebirth Batman. Dude is weensy teensy. And so for something that is this small, I'm gonna give the McFarlane Toys crew a lot of credit for this little weensy figure. It actually looks really good. And I, you know what, you'll find when we get to the end of this video that their quality control from wave one till now is definitely better. You know they're only gonna have five POA, right? The legs go up and down, the arms are actually on little tiny rounded ball joints there and you got the head and you got the waist. Oh, never mind, that's six POA. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six POA. Do these wrists, nope, six POA. Also, something you may have noticed is that these little figures here are all basically just really tiny shrunk down versions of the original figures they're based off of. I imagine it has everything to do with the digital files and they just, you know, manufacture it in a smaller scale and, you know, th that's it. And can we get a hell yeah for the fact that this Lex Luthor does not have the side eye? This little Luthor looks really good. I'm actually really impressed with this tiny little Lex Luthor. This Batman Beyond Terry McGinnis turned out really well also. Like seriously, check out how clean and crisp the paint detail is for this figure. I mean, remember, these are just so small that it can be really challenging to paint their details neatly and tidily. The wings are like a a weird bendy softy rubber, they don't come apart, so you can't actually use the wings, they're just stuck there. Again, clearly a shrunk down version of the original multiverse figure, but I mean, this is just such a clean looking, tiny Batman Beyond. And then we have Flashpoint's Emperor Aquaman. This is actually done pretty well, just like the rest for something so small. This trident, it's so teensy weensy, it's bendy, it's flimsy, it's stuck to his back. The strap would have been brown, just like with the original, except for they're like, oh, we just painted the same color as the trident and as the hair and as the belt. But it's likely because they only had, you know, it's cheaper with less color options, right? I mean, let's face it, these are little tiny figures banged out with a comic. They're either hoping the little kids buy these or a very niche market. So, you know, painting is expensive in the world of toys. It does look good though, I mean, I'm really impressed with this wave's QC control. I think it has the best QC out of all three of the waves so far of the page punchers. And that face, 
That does not disappoint. That's, yep. Now I'm just gonna put a picture up of all the rest of the page punchers with the current wave together, all three waves together for you to look at for a minute with some other photos playing over top just while I give my final thoughts. I, you know, at first I wasn't super on board with the tiny page punchers. I thought they were okay, they were kind of cool, but also not really necessarily my cup of tea. And one of those reasons was because the QC just wasn't there for wave one, and even wave two it was a little shaky. By comparison to this wave, which the QC is actually really, really well done. And honestly for me, these are perfect for when Robert wants to play with some of my toys. He comes into my office, he's like, I'll play with your toys, Dad, and can bring these out and they're perfect for him. Because I'm not letting him play with my multiverse figures, you kidding? Anyway, big thanks to McFarlane for sending these to me and I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day everybody, and take care.